Hey guys, this is Jaybird from UGX Mods, and today we're going to be doing another tutorial on prefabs. So the first thing we're going to be doing with them is I'm actually just going to do an explanation of how to use them and what they are. The second thing I'm going to be going over with them is just the saving process, so how you would save a prefab and be able to use it. And the third thing I'm going to be going over is editing existing prefabs. Alright guys, let's get started. Alright guys, so we're back in the map here, and what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to explain what a prefab is. So a prefab is actually a map file. So it's a dot map uh, file, just like your actual test map here, or your own map. Uh, but, like we did our RK5, this is actually its own map file. So there was an empty map file that's literally just got this brush, a struct, and the chalk of the actual RK5. The script, uh, the scripting side of this stuff is actually just because of the, the KVPs, which we'll go over in a later tutorial on how to do some scripting entities and whatnot. But yeah, so there are many different types of prefabs you can do because it's literally just a map file. So it's like having a map file in another map file, and there's some prefab settings here as, as well. But basically, it allows you to create, uh, say. For instance, you, you, you created a building, and you wanted to have that building so it was one object, and you didn't want to have to move all the brushes and all the models that were in that building. You create a prefab of that, and now it's one entity. You can still edit it, because it's still its own map file, so it still allows you to create and edit uh, the actual parts of the building, but it allows you to also be able to move it at the same time. So you see, if I wanted this whole section here that we created last time to be uh, its own prefab uh, well first of all if I wanted to move it I'd have to select everything here like if I just tried to move one of the objects or two of the objects it's just gonna move like the ones that I have selected so if I wanted to move them all I'd have to select them all so let's create this into a prefab so we're gonna start off by saving prefabs so when you have everything that you want to be in a prefab selected what you're going to want to do is just right click and come down to prefab. You'll see we have a whole bunch of prefab uh, settings here. So uh, the f one that we're going to want to do is save selected as new prefab. So what that's going to do is bring up this new window, just a save window, and it's basically just going to show you the map source folder under underscore prefab. So this is your prefabs folder. I've created my own called Jaybird, but for now we're going to create a test one. So I just right click there and went new folder. And then I can open up that folder and I call, I can call this test building. And then it's gonna save that. So now, if I deselect everything and I select, if I tried to select this wall, it's actually gonna select the entire prefab. So now it's treating it as one entity. So that's basically how you would save it as a prefab. The thing is, you could also just create a separate map like say I started over a new map file and then I just saved it. If I saved it under the prefabs folder, then that would also be considered a prefab. So it's just a map file. So that's all it is. So now for editing the, the prefab, because right now I can't select a specific entity. I can't move that chair uh, without having to, what's, uh, I had to go into the prefab to be able to do that. So what I'm gonna do is select the prefab and then just right click and go back to the prefab uh, settings here and I'm going to do enter prefab. So now you can see the rest of the map has kind of disappeared. Don't worry it didn't delete or anything. I've just now opened up that map file. So now when you look at this at the top here I have map source prefabs test test building. That's exactly what we saved it. So now I'm actually in that map file and that's why there's only the things that I had uh, selected. So the RK5 is there, the chair, the walls, and the ceiling. So what I can do now is I could actually add more things in here. So say I duplicated this chair over, I uh, remember click N to, uh, M to bring up the uh, models window here. Let's say, so we'll go, we'll just select a table and then it should load, although that's not a table, that's a stand for a table. So we'll, we'll add the table We'll add the tabletop. There we go. We have a table added. And so now I'm going to save. So control S. Or you could do file save. But then now we want to go back to our map file to see if this change was made to the actual map. So we'll go and right click prefab 
leave prefab. So now we're back in the map file and our table is showing up as part of the prefab now. So that is actually a pretty simple way to have things organized. So I could actually start making, okay, this is building A, I could start making building B and like, you know, you just keep doing it like that and it's optimized. So you could also have when you're doing group projects and whatnot and have one person going off and creating uh, one building, he could make it as a prefab and then he sends you that prefab map file and then you just drag it into your map and set it to where you want it to be. So it's a pretty easy way of getting this to all work together and be organized. So this is actually something that I use quite a bit when I'm making a map. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to want to go over here is say you don't want this to be a prefab anymore. You're done with it being a prefab uh, for whatever reason or maybe you wanted to move something but you just you don't want it to be a prefab anymore for whatever reason. Select the prefab, right click, go to prefab and we have stamp prefab. So that is going to stamp all the objects in this to be exactly where they are but not be part of the prefab anymore so I'll hit that it'll just de uh, deselect everything for me but now when I try to select something it's now not it's its own entity it's not part of the prefab anymore although if I go to my prefabs folder so if I because I have mine um, it should be uh, under prefab browser and then we have our folder still so it was under uh, test I'm gonna have to reload this because I made uh, that folder since I uh, launched Radiant. So I'll hit uh, reload. So that's another tip. If you created a folder or added a prefab and it's not showing up, just hit the reload button there. It'll pop it up here. So I'll hit test and test building. So I'll drag that on right here and look at that. It's still got our prefab because it's saved as a map file. But this one is not a prefab because we stamped it. So it's its own separate group of entities now. So it's like I can move this wall over there and then this is still gonna move as one thing. So that's gonna cover prefabs guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.